we're back on the roof. So today I'm actually doing a PM and I came across this system and it's just the inducer's running, it's not heating. I reset it, not doing anything. Getting six flashes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that says that uh, six flashes is inducer draft motor fault. Obviously it's not faulted, it's running. Um, so generally I would think, hey, pressure switch, but this motor is different, there is no pressure switch. What we have is we have these three wires here and these run up into here and that's connected to the board. So this is a little bit different than a uh, pressure switch. It actually, um, it's what's called a Hall effect sensor. So it actually detects the magnetic field created by that inducer running. Now this motor looks like it's been replaced before because this looks pretty new. Uh, but generally if you're not getting ignition and everything's running, uh, it, you would treat it just like a pressure switch. Okay, something's up. So inducers thinking that it's not running properly. So in this case, it's a Hall effect sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and test this and uh, we'll show you what goes on. So here we go. Okay, so first things first is you want the power on, okay, to do this. And you're gonna wanna find the plug here, right? Now you don't wanna have any call for heat while you're doing this, okay? So I've unplugged the Y. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug this, all right? We'll set it aside so it doesn't spark on anything. Now you see those three prongs there? Uh, we want to do the outside, the two outsides, okay? Now we're going to be checking DC voltage. We should be getting anywhere between 6 and 10 volts uh, DC. Yep. All right, cool. So that's a good sign. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this back in. Now we want to see if it's actually detecting the magnetic field. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to keep our, our meter on DC. We're going to put on the black wire and the white wire, okay? And see, we have 10 volts there. Uh, and then what we wanna do is we wanna actually slowly spin this motor. As it spins, we should see a fluctuation in this voltage. So let me go ahead and get something to stick in there so I can spin it. When you're doing this, just be very careful that this isn't gonna just randomly turn on. So anyway, we're gonna spin it. Okay, and as you can see, the voltage it is steady, so that means our Hall effect sensor is not functional. Now it is fluctuating a little bit, but it should go like negative one. So it's like pretty obvious, Not it's not like just a little tiny dip. Yeah, so that's what it looks like while it's running. Let's go ahead and uh, there is another unit that's exactly like this one that works. So we'll go ahead and show you what it's supposed to look like. All right, so I'm on a different unit, obviously it's running, okay? We have our meter set to DC. Here's our Hall Effect sensor plugs. And right there. And right there. And you can see it's bouncing all over the place. So we know it's working properly. Now let's show you how to do it without uh, power. All right, so we got the W taken off. So we're gonna check the two outsides. We should be getting six to 10 volts. We're getting 10.6. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. Alrighty, and then we're gonna go ahead and stick our prongs in between the white and the black. All right, so now we go ahead and spin it. You can see it's fluctuating. Okay, so this one's working. So that's how you can tell. So that's if you ever come across one, this is how you test for it. So it's two days later and we're back. We got our new inducer draft motor. Um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and change it out. So we got all of our uh, wires disconnected, so we can go ahead and remove these 516 screws. And there's one there, one right here, uh, one right there, and I think there's one underneath there somewhere. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, so anyway, let me get the screws out. So yeah, one right there, one right there, one right there, and I think there's one in the corner somewhere. Oh, they didn't install it. Okay, cool. Well, let's screw a guy do it. So I got the old gasket scraped off, thankfully. New one comes with a new gasket. Uh, you always want to change the gaskets when you're swapping these out, uh, just because the old one's usually all messed up. So anyway, uh, just make sure you scrape it off really good. So we're gonna go ahead and get this mounted and then get that in place, and then we'll wire it up. Okay, so I got my gasket in place. Um, I put two screws here sticking out because they're open holes on the bottom, so you can just set it right on top. So it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, okay, 
Okay, cool. So we got her in place. Now we'll put in the rest of the screws. All right, so now that I got all the screws in place, I'm gonna go ahead and crank them down in a cross pattern. Uh, so I added the one that was missing down here. Well, I guess I'll start with that one. All right, so we're wiring it up now. If you notice, we only have three wires here. This one, we have one, two, four wires, right? So what do we do? Well, no worries there. Purple, this purple wire, that's gonna go right into the board, which is gonna go right there, okay? Our yellow wire, okay? Our yellow wire is gonna go into our run cap, okay? And then the brown wire is also gonna go in the run cap. And then I'm gonna put an end on this one, which will go into the yellow side of the run cap. So I'll show you once I get all hooked up. Because it's basically going to line two. So um, this one just, uh, so pretty much yellow and blue are connected. So it doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get that done. All right, so we got it all wired up. So we got our yellow going into our run cap here. And then that yellow running back up into the line and then we got that purple wire running up going into the CM connection right there. Okay, and then we have our brown wire going on the other side of the capacitor. So that's how you'll go from a four to a three wire hookup. So anyway, we got the W taken off. Just make sure it doesn't come on on us. We're gonna go ahead and test this. So I'm gonna shove these in here. Uh, the blue and the, I'm sorry, the white and the, the black wire. Okay, so now we're getting about eight volts. Okay, now if I go in there and I spin it, you can see it's fluctuating, so our Hall Effect sensor works. So let's go ahead and power this thing on, and uh, we'll call for heat, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, we got our W hooked up, meters hooked up, so we should get bouncing voltage, uh, assuming we have a call for heat. I didn't think about that. Yep, we do. But yeah, you can see now, it's bouncing all over the place. Now I just smelled gas. But we didn't get ignition, so that's a little scary there. But hopefully our ignition system's working. So a cool way to check, see if your igniter is sending power. Uh, you can actually go to non-contact voltage and hold it up to, to that, uh, to the wire going to the igniter assembly. And it should start beeping once, uh, you know, assuming we're getting power going through. So if we're not, then we know we either got a bad connection or the igniter's bad. But the gas valve is working because I do smell gas. Yep. So the igniter is not sparking, but we are getting power. So we need to check that igniter it might be dirty. All right, so the one time I don't clean the freaking thing, I'm also gonna check that ground. So this one, you see that? So yeah, you see that brown wire right there? Uh, that's the ground, so we wanna make sure that's a nice clean connection, because if that's not hooked up right, then it's just not gonna arc. So I'm gonna clean this first, and then we'll get that all hooked up. And actually, I think this might have been disconnected. So yeah. Flame sensor and igniter's clean, burners are clean, fire in the hole. good to go so when you come across a unit like this you can't find the pressure switch and you got these three crazy wires that's how you test it it's a hall effect switch not a centrifugal switch and yes i pronounced that correctly thanks guys uh, but a hall effect switch it detects the electromagnetic field that's produced by the motor running okay and you're going to use dc to check for it so anyway Hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Thanks for watching.